disasters. DRNC is honored to partner with and introduce our CRAP. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. So apparently I can't seem to stay away from my microwave door. So I'm, I may be doing some good stuff for the rest of the world. Can't get it right with the microwave door. Um, I also started my morning um, at the courtyard up the street with a um, carbon monoxide fire alarm. So got me in the right framework for um, talking about emergency management. Definitely, my head is there. So I, I wanna thank uh, Disability Rights North Carolina for hosting this important community forum and for allowing the Partnership for Inclusive Disaster Strategies and Port Life Strategies to join you. Thank you to my longtime friend, Virginia, who jumped in all the way on her first week at Disability Rights North Carolina and also to Iris, Cass, and the whole team for stepping up and leading the way on many disability rights issues, and especially for your leadership during Hurricane Florence. I also wanna give a shout out to the leadership of the Centers for Independent Living uh, Directors, Gloria Garten, Dave Wickstrom, who has uh, gone on to a new job, and Vicki Smith. I also wanna give special thanks to Sherry Badger, Holly Riddle, Donna Platt, and so many others who have done all they could to navigate a complex system that still fails to meet the needs of people with disabilities and disasters. Uh, your fabulous report, The Storm After the Storm, very effectively documents what we already knew. Despite 46 years of civil rights protection from discrimination and unequal treatment, People with disabilities remain very much in harm's way before, during, and after disasters. Documenting the failures is a vital first step towards moving from admiring the problems over and over and over again to making real change before the next inevitable disaster strikes. The partnership stands ready to help. We are a coalition of local, national, and global disability rights emergency management and public health leaders and allies committed to equal access and whole community inclusion before, during, and after disasters. Our founders and members have a strong track record of protecting and advancing the rights of people with disabilities, which by the way, 26% of the population according to the CDC and over 1 billion people with disabilities across the globe. We've been leading humanitarian response and relief initiatives to meet the disability accessibility needs of disaster impacted individuals throughout catastrophic disasters and humanitarian response and relief for over 20 years. The partnership was founded by Portlight Inclusive Disaster Strategies in 2016 to focus on disability inclusive emergency management, community organizing, policy, advocacy, and training. We work collaboratively with Portlight, our members and partners to lead change, navigate complex systems, and eliminate barriers to equal access to emergency and disaster programs and services for people with disabilities. Our mission is equal access to emergency programs and services and full inclusion of the whole community before, during, and after disasters. We achieve our mission through unwavering support for local disability organizations, community engagement, organizing and leadership development, advocacy and public policy, training and education, research and technical assistance. We also focus on the access and functional needs of countless people who are dis disproportionately impacted in disasters due to inadequate planning, preparedness, and accessibility. This includes people who may require assistance, accommodation, or modification due to any situation, temporary or permanent, that limits their ability to take action in an emergency. In addition to people with disabilities, this also includes people who are marginalized, stigmatized, or excluded, older adults, 
individuals with limited English proficiency, low literacy, temporary and chronic health conditions, pregnant women, people experiencing homelessness, limited access to transportation, or the financial resources to prepare for, respond to, and recover from a disaster. Globally, we bring our expertise and leadership to disaster risk reduction, climate change adaptation, human rights, humanitarian action, strategic development, and resilient community initiatives. Our US members lead disability rights initiatives in every congressional district and virtually every community across the country. Our core values of equal access, inclusion, and independence continually guide our work towards a future where community readiness is achieved and sustained for everyone through a shared and unwavering commitment to accessibility, universal design, and reasonable accommodation before, during, and after disasters. This includes equal access and full inclusion throughout planning, exercises, alerts, notification, evacuation, transportation, sheltering, health maintenance, medical care, temporary housing. This also includes maintaining a full commitment to equal access, inclusion, and, independent, and independence as disaster impacted people return home, to school, to work, and their community. And it carry on, carries on <clears throat> throughout recovery and mitigation initiatives, excuse me, <coughs> uh, led by the active and knowledgeable leadership of people with disabilities and fully informed by the community as a whole. Experience has shown us that these values of access, inclusion, and independence are imperatives for achieving and sustaining community-wide disaster resilience. Those civil rights protections from the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 require that every federal dollar spent before, during, and after a disaster are spent in compliance with requirements for equal access, program, and effective communication access without exception. There are no disaster waivers to civil rights laws. This presents a huge opportunity to the people of North Carolina. We will be introducing two bills in the next 10 days. The first one, Real Emergency Access for Aging and Disability Inclusion in Disasters Act, known as the Ready in Disasters Act. And this will include a national commission on disability and disaster, 10 regional training and technical assistance centers, uh, a government accountability office study of the funds that have been spent since Hurricane Katrina to look at Rehabilitation Act compliance, Department of Justice review of all project civic access settlement agreements to, sure, to ensure that all emergency related um, uh, settlement agreements were completed. The second bill is the Disaster Relief Medicaid Act, um, and this is the DRMA. And this bill will focus very specifically on Medicaid portability for people who are evacuated across state lines in disasters. Already we have close to 100 supporting organizations. Let's make sure all of yours are included. The work we all do in disaster inclusion isn't just about people with disabilities. What happens to people with disabilities has a direct impact not only on them, but on the rest of society especially their families and their communities. Do all you can to turn this crisis into an opportunity. Make sure everyone has equal access to emergency programs and services before, during, and after disasters. Don't let one penny of emergency and disasters funds get spent without meeting accessibility requirements. The partnership and Portlight are beside you all the way. Never give up, never give in. Thank you.